Well, welcome to the Life to the Fullest podcast. I'm your host, Dan Jason. I'm so grateful that you're here with me today. We're talking about money because it is Monday. Financial freedom is what we're about at EF3 Life Financial. And it's about growing your wealth, your personal wealth, and helping you to reach your dreams. You know, I was thinking about it earlier this morning on the Monday Money Minute. And it just really excites me to know where people are moving and how things are shaken out when it comes to to their money, make sure you visit ef3life.com slash financial to learn more. Pick up a copy of my book, you know, Winning with Money, Dollars and Cents. And this is a great way to help you to continue on your own journey of financial freedom. Over the weekend, spending a lot of time with family and having some great conversations, you know, at a birthday party and we're talking finances. You know, it just so happens that people are thinking about it now because it's the falls getting closer to the holiday season. And you know what? The thing that comes to mind is it's on people's minds. And that's really beautiful. I'm really excited about that. It makes me fired up to know there's a lot of younger people out there, really people of every age, who are thinking about their finances and taking ownership and wanting to do something about it. You know, I recently over the weekend literally set up accounts for three of my cousins and it just makes me really excited for them because they're going to have a much better future. Before college started, I met with two other younger individuals who are going off to school, having turned 18 years old, having income, and we started them out with a Roth IRA and brokerage account so they could trade on the stock market. You know, this is a tremendous way for young people to invest in their future, especially when you think about your student loan payments that are going to be happening if you're making income right now. It's important for you to take care of what you can to get into the market so that way you could utilize growth potential the next four years to help you to pay off your loans a little bit sooner. And by working, we always know that the greatest wealth building tool is our income and how we utilize that income when it comes in to make sure that we're doing things the right way. So there's so much to say today on this Life to the Fullest podcast edition. We're talking about the green, and we want it to be a money-making machine. And that's what it's about. But you got to set up some things to help you to establish your finances. And today I want to focus primarily on this podcast episode about future retirement, as well as getting into the market to help you to float and bridge the gap to retirement. There's this old adage and this old saying that, you know, you're going to have to work until you die. Well, that's baloney. You don't have to do that. And certainly I think you don't want to do that. If you could retire today, would you do that? No matter what age you might be. There's people out there right now listening to this podcast all across the world. Thank you for tuning in. It's actually being broadcasted in over 25 different countries and across the continental U.S. in almost every state. And I'm very excited to say that because there's so many people who are trying to tap into making their life better. And that's what this is about. Life to the fullest is all about that. Trying to give you real insight into these areas of education, faith, fitness, and finance. So when it comes to your money, when it comes to what you work so hard for, and the amount of hours that you put in is actually quite amazing. If you think about somebody's career, somebody works maybe 40 years from the time of their 20 to the time of their 60, that is a lot of time. And the thing is, there's nothing in life that's guaranteed, but what we can guarantee is what we could do today. And that's why it's so important to put our money where it counts, where it will grow, so we can utilize it. So that way, hopefully, we can retire earlier. That work forever mentality is not something that I take into what I want to do for my own future. Now, hopefully you want to better yourself and your family and those around you as well. And that's what today is about. It's about doing things differently. If you want something to change, you have to make some radical changes in your own life. This could be really hard. A lot of times people don't want to do that. A lot of times the discipline isn't there, but they need accountability. And these radical shifts only take place when you understand why it's so important. If you really do want it bad enough, if your why is big enough, you will make it happen. You'll make it happen. There's nothing that will stop you. The only thing that will stop you is you. Regardless of where you are financially right now, this very moment, you can make it happen. You don't have to wait until you're 59 and a half years old or far beyond. There's people out there working until they're 70 or 75. And here's the thing. If you want to, if you're desiring to do that because you love your job and it's like never going to work type of deal, then go ahead. 
If you want a hobby, if you want something that you get to do, that's totally different. But I'm talking about having to wake up and go to work every single day. And there's so many people out there who aren't enjoying what they're doing. That's a whole nother thing to consider. But what I'm talking about is the rise in the grind. You don't have to grind anymore, okay? You do have to rise and you do have to go to work. But if you do the little by little, step by step, over the course of time, the compound interest is going to be your very best friend. Albert Einstein said it. He said compound interest is the eighth wonder of the world. This guy was a phenomenal mathematician, scientist, what have you, and he knew what he was talking about. And we're going to talk about the rule of 72. We're going to talk about investments. We're going to talk about how to set up yourself for a good future. And the fact that it doesn't take crazy exorbitant amounts of money to make it happen. So many people think, yeah, in order for me to become a millionaire, I have to hit the lottery. Well, actually, you don't. There are plenty of millionaires out there who work average jobs, make medium salaries, and just do it over the course of time. And that's what you have to consider. So shout out to all those young people out there, those people who are 18, 19, 20, 21, 22 years old, who understand the importance of getting in the game early. If you're sitting on the sidelines right now, and you're not in the game when it comes to your retirement, when it comes to getting into a brokerage account and being able to have money that's accessible to get into the market, you want to get in now. There's no better day to get in than right now today because the more time that you sit around on the sidelines watching the time pass away is less time to maximize compound interest, which is your very best friend. So I was sitting down with a couple of my cousins over the weekend and I helped them to set up some accounts, Roth IRA and brokerage account through TD Ameritrade. Now here's one thing you have to consider. So many people are asking me, well, Dan, what type of account or fund should I be using? And here's the thing, the platform doesn't matter so much as what you actually are investing in. And that's something to highly consider. Now, personally, you know, there's great ones out there like Merrill Lynch, Charles Schwab, TD Ameritrade, in my personal opinion, is one of the very best because of the amount of free resources that they give to you and also the amount of things that they do to help you to make it easier when you are investing. The platform itself, the ease of use, having the app that's just super easy to manipulate and also the platform where it gives you emails and it helps to set up and personalize your profile so that way you're getting content that actually helps you when you're investing. But Vanguard, you know, there's so many others and the biggest thing is to get involved, to get in. So we set up these accounts and literally for no money at all, you can set them up. And then based on what you wanna do for an initial investment, you decide how you're going to go about it and how aggressive you wanna be and what funds you want to you know, take control of. So when it came to the Roth IRA, and that's something I wanna start out with, we're talking about long-term planning. We're talking about in the far off future, for those who are out there who are below 30 years old, we're talking about you're gonna have 30 plus years of growth potential. So you wanna be ultra aggressive at the beginning. You know, As time goes on, you get a little bit less aggressive. And as you get closer to that age number where you can withdraw without penalty at 59 and a half, you can dial down the aggression. But when it comes to selecting your funds, there's so many amazing resources out there. And one of those I have to highly suggest is The Motley Fool. And so after signing my cousins up, I said to them, I'm gonna give you some really great advice. I'm gonna walk with you through this. We're gonna actually make the selections together so that way we know how we're investing, how it's being allocated, the different sectors that we're diversifying it in because that's super important. And as you get a hang of this, you'll be able to do some on your own, but I'm gonna walk with you. And that's what I'm gonna do with you as well. But for those at home who have some kind of background knowledge in this, or maybe really want to learn more, for as little as $100 for the entire year, you can sign up to The Motley Fool, and they're going to give you expert advice. They're going to give you uh, multiple emails per week. They're going to invite you to webinars and a series of different types of avenues that you can learn from experts online resources, articles, and then obviously the platform itself with the best picks of the day, the best buys now. Every Thursday, those that they suggest to buy if you can get into it. And the thing is, you can just start building this database on your own of what different selections that you can get into when you have money that's available to be invested. So when it comes to a Roth IRA, why is that so important? Why is that something that we want to get involved in if we're trying to invest for the long haul? And that's because it grows tax-free. And there's a real great benefit to this because 
At 59 and a half, when you start withdrawing your money, the net income level that you're at, and depending upon how much you put in over the course of time, when you withdraw it, you're gonna be able to get out that money without any penalty, without having to pay any taxes because you already pay tax up front. And here's the thing, most people when it comes to life, they don't remember what they did a long time ago. They're, they just think about what's there in front of them today. So you fast forward 30 or so years and you're 59 and a half, 60 years old and you're way ready to withdraw and you have a traditional IRA. And that, here's the thing, that's a great fund as well. It's a great type of opportunity, especially if you are in a 401k program and you have a match or your 403b. You know, all these are tax codes. But the thing is that you are able to utilize your money and not get taxed on it because you already pay taxes up front. It's like taking care of the payment beforehand so that we can have the reward later on. And with the Roth IRA, it grows tax-free as opposed to the 401k or the regular IRA or the 403b. You have to pay taxes on it at the time of withdrawal. So it will grow higher. You'll have a greater amount. However, you're going to have to pay taxes on it. And I prefer that, you know, I don't pay taxes on it, at least with one of my accounts, because that's a really great way to really stir up how much you actually have versus how to play this game. There's also a couple other benefits. The Roth IRA allows you to withdraw the money that you initially invest in outside of the profits or the um, increase in terms of the percent that you gain in interest and you're able to take that out at any time. Now that's a beautiful thing because over the course of 30 years, let's say you max it out every year on average, right? The highest right now that you can put in is around $6,000. Now there's some exceptions, you know, if you're over 50 years old, they give you a catch up plan, $7,000, so on and so forth. But right now, let's say the general rule of thumb is $6,000 that you could put in and you can invest on a yearly basis. Well, you break it down by month, that's in a 12 month period, $500 per month. Now you might be say, thinking to yourself, I can't afford to put in $500 per month or I don't want to. Okay, that's fine. But over the course of time, let's say you do that. Well, your initial investment of $6,000 per year, that's $500 per month times 12 is $6,000 per year, would equate to over a 30 year period, $180,000. Because 6,000 times 30 years is 180,000. You might be thinking to yourself, wow, that's a decent amount of money. That's a good chunk, that's great. What if I tell you, though, that that money that's growing at an average rate of return, if you're getting the stock market average over the last 125 years at almost 12%, it's going to equate to over $1.25 million. Wow, that's a lot of money. You might even be making upwards of $1.5 or $1.6 million. That's a whole lot of money. That means that you 10x times your investment. And who wouldn't take that if they had that opportunity? Well, they do. You have that opportunity right now. And it doesn't matter if you can't do $500 a month. That's okay. Do what you can. Because the earlier that you get in the game, the quicker that your money is going to grow because it has more time to grow. And that's the main thing. You know, I'm talking to 18, 19-year-old kids who might have an initial $1,000 investment or $2,000 investment because they got all this money from graduation, right? And they're wondering, well, what can I do with it to help myself in my long-term future? And they put it into a Roth IRA because they do have some kind of income coming in due to jobs, work during the summertime, what have you. And they put it in there and they allow it to grow and it just sits there. If you had $1,000 and were to sit there for 40 years and you're at 19, 18, 19 years old, do you know how much that money would equate to? $1,000, you don't add a penny to it. I'm talking about compound interest at about a rate of 12 or so percent. That's gonna grow to a whopping, unbelievable, massive amount of money. You're gonna be sitting at about $45,000. Can you believe that? That's incredible. It's unbelievable. But it's true, but you have to allow it to sit there over time versus somebody who maybe they start working, they don't get into the habit of doing it, they find themselves in their 30s and then they're saying, oh shoot, I gotta start planning for retirement. Now the one downside, the only caveat really to the Roth IRA, besides for if you're trying to take out money that gained interest, you can't take that out without a penalty, okay? It's similar to a regular IRA, it's similar to the 401k or 403b, what have you. But you can only give or put in, I should say, invest $6,000 per year. 
And there's some people out there who want to do a whole lot more than that. And I highly encourage you. So if you're somebody out there who can do that, max out the 6,000 per year. And then once that's maxed out, go ahead and open up a traditional IRA. And if you're someone who has an employer match, 401k or 403b, then you want to take advantage of that and do the match. So if your employer is matching you at 6%, at least invest the 6% so you get in a free six, so it's like you're actually investing 12. And just know that you have to be vested, meaning there's a select amount of time you have to work for the company before they allow you to take the money that they gave you for the match with you if you decide to move on. Just understand what that is, so that way you're staying there long enough if you can to be able to take that free money with you. And wherever you go, you can roll it over. Now, if it's a 403B or it's a 401K, it's a traditional IRA that you have, you could always roll it into a Roth IRA if you want to. But again, you're going to have to pay the taxes up front on it, so it might not make sense to do so. You might want to separate those accounts. That's perfectly fine. All right? But we're talking about long-term financial future. So what am I trying to invest in? Well, you want to spread it out and diversify it amongst a number of different sectors. Right now, obviously, we're in the tech world. Okay, there are companies blowing up all the time and there's a lot of money to be made with these high tech companies. But you might be somebody that's thinking, you know, even if I wanted to play it safe and I'm selecting companies like Microsoft and selecting companies like Apple and Google and Amazon, what have you, that have been tried and true over the longer period of time, that are still on the rise, maybe that still feels a little bit too risky to you because of your single stocks and companies that you're investing in. Well then, invest in indexes. Invest in... ETFs, which trade just like mutual funds, okay? They're just like them because it's a basket of 20 to 25 different companies on average, and it spreads it out amongst them so that way you're seeing growth. You're not gonna see this exponential crazy type of growth that you know, if a single stock spikes out of control, you're not gonna gain those kind of profits. That's okay though, it's gonna grow over the course of time. So a couple of those that I highly suggest getting into Invesco, QQQ, a great one, has all the high tech sector type of companies that I was just explaining, as well as a lot of others that Vanguard has in terms of their VGT, their technology index, and that's a great one as well. There's so many out there, you could do some more research. I have them online. I'm gonna be putting out a number of different posts as well. And it just helps you to understand that you can do it smart. And you could do it in a bold manner to help maximize your gains. All right. ETFs are the way to go in terms of wanting to diversify your portfolio. And you want to get into the healthcare sector. So again, Vanguard funds in terms of healthcare, very beneficial. Right? You want to get into consumer goods as well. You want to get into large cap and small cap. VOO, VO. These are all symbols for other Vanguard indexes that are very helpful that have a total stock market index of the largest Fortune 500 companies, the middle of the road companies, and then the smaller ones that are on the rise. Diversification is super critical. Mutual funds are super critical. And if you're somebody who just says, you know what, I just wanna be on autopilot, okay? I'm not somebody who wants a hands-on approach. I'm not getting into the down and dirty every single day. I also don't wanna be calling up an investor or have to spend more money in order to invest. That's okay, you can put it on autopilot. You could buy into a life cycle fund. They have these funds at T. Rowe Price and uh, pretty much every larger type of platform allows you to go into this type of life cycle fund which basically selects the date that you can retire. So when you're gonna turn 59 and a half, so to speak. So it might be a 2055 fund, a 2060 fund. That's just the year that you can start withdrawing the money. And what happens is it selects a select mix based on your risk mitigation factor, based on your level of comfortability and how aggressive you want to be earlier on. And then it'll dial it back automatically as time goes on, as you get older, as you get closer and closer to retirement until it's really, really less aggressive once you're at the age or very close to it. And that's just a nice way to have it on autopilot. Regardless of what you select, Okay, the type of platform, again, doesn't matter so much as you have this Roth IRA, you're contributing to it monthly, you're contributing to it annually, and you keep after it. And as your salary increases, you increase 
the amount that you're contributing until you get to that max level and then you automatically do the max and over that 30 year period or even if it's 25 years from now until you're able to retire whatever the case is you'll be able to grow your net worth that way and you'll see the benefits over the course of time now one important thing is also to think about what am i going to do when it comes to if i want to retire early there's people out there right now that are saying to themselves I don't want to work till I'm 59 and a half. And if I didn't have to, I would stop working today. That might be most of us. Here's the thing. You don't have to. It's no longer I have to work till 59 and a half. It's I need to work until I have enough money to get me to where I need to be to be able to live comfortably in the way that I want to. And if that involves traveling, if that involves, you know, being very uh, generous and giving to other people, if that involves, you know, helping my grandchildren around, my kids with college, you have to decide what kind of lifestyle you want. Okay, how much you need to live on and how much you need on, on top of that to be able to live in a comfortable manner. Once you figure out the math on that, and that's all done by a budget, and if you're somebody who's following the EF3 Life Financial Platform and way of living, you understand that living on a budget is 100% necessary and it's not something that you ever stop doing. Even if you acquire a lot of wealth, even if you're somebody who's continuing to increase your net worth, what have you, you have to continue to do so. Because if you do that, you'll be able to utilize your money you'll be able to take advantage of the things that you have and you'll be able to tell your money where to go and you won't run out of it and you'll be able to do a lot of amazing things in your future so when it comes to floating yourself until the retirement age bridging the gap is what it's called how do you do that well think to yourself maybe i want to try my goal is to retire at age 50 and that's almost 10 years before the 59 and a half kicks in so you have to think to yourself how much money do i need per year to live on, to be able to live comfortably in the lifestyle manner that I want to, still have financial freedom, I'm rid of all debt, my house is paid off, that's what you gotta be thinking because if th those things are taken uh, care of, your biggest expenses are done with. You don't need as much money to come in or have saved, which I mean invested, so you could draw upon it in order to get you to that age of retirement. That's something for you to sit down and really hash out and do some math here to figure that out. Once you figure that out, maybe it's $30,000 that you need to live on. Maybe it's $35,000, $40,000. Whatever that number is, then you multiply it by those 10 years. So if you're somebody who says, you know, to live in the manner I want to, in order to get to retirement age, I need $40,000 a year. Multiply that by 10 if I wanted to retire at age 50. That means that I need $400,000 invested accessible to get me to 59 and a half years old. How do I do that? That's getting into the stock market. That's getting into other types of investments. You can get into real estate, absolutely. This podcast right now, this episode is not about real estate, but it's an amazing way to continue to build net worth, to have passive income, to grow your income level on a monthly basis, to be able to have a nest egg to be able to you know offload a property and have a chunk of money come in but for right now I want to talk about bridging the gap through active investing in the stock market because if you're somebody who understands how to invest in a Roth IRA and you're selecting the funds yourself the market is no different and here's the thing for people who don't want to be risky they don't have to select single stocks all the time although I do encourage you to do so because there's a smart way of going about it you can follow the advice again of you know platforms like the motley fool you can watch my monday money minute you can read my book winning with money dollars and cents and there's a lot of great advice in there articles that we write on on the website and and countless youtube videos do your own research do your due diligence read books like everyday millionaire by chris hogan you know there's countless resources that you can utilize the biggest thing though is getting in the game and making sure that you stay on top of it. So if you're paying attention, the app makes it so easy. And I'm not talking about every single day checking it. You can if you want to, but you're gonna see lots of ebbs and flows just like you would with your Roth IRA, your traditional IRA, your retirement accounts. But if you're continuing to actually actively invest and every single paycheck you're saying, I'm gonna put X amount of money into it because that's what I'm doing. I'm gonna pay myself first. And that's a mentality that has to change. You know, people who wait around and they, you know, pay all of their bills, they go out to dinner, they, you know, do these things and activities, and then they save to invest, there's no way to get ahead. You have to set aside money right away 
you know, after all of the absolute necessities are paid for and say, I'm going to put this away or invest it so that way I have more to grow and to, you know, draw on in the days to come. And that's where that mindset shifts. And that's where, you know, having this type of understanding, but also the discipline to do it kicks in. And it becomes a lot of, you know, repetition, but also it becomes really attractive to you because you'll see your accounts continue to rise. And I highly encourage you as you're getting into the actual stock market to start making a spreadsheet. It could be as easy as an Excel sheet and just track which stocks you have. Now, the apps do that for you, so you don't necessarily have to do that, but just being paying attention to how much is your net worth increasing each month. Because if you're continuing to go up, you're going in the right direction. If you have continuous months where it's going down, then you got to think about and reallocate uh, your funds. And that goes more so with active stocks than with uh, Roth IRA or you know retirement account because you have more time. When I'm actively investing in the stock market, I'm thinking about a two year to three year period. So I'm holding like, you know, there's periods where ebbs and flows and maybe you want to sell off some because you want to utilize that profit. And then when it drops back down, you could buy back in. That's a great way of going about it. But you got to figure out, well, what is my goal? You know, what do I want to do? Why am I actively investing? And what am I going to use that money for? If it's to bridge yourself to retirement, you got to keep thinking long term. You could draw on it from time to time, sell 20, 30 shares of this in order to go on a vacation or you know if it's a higher level stock you could sell more of it in order to buy a car that kind of stuff here's the thing though when you're gaining interest when you're gaining money on top because of that compounding factor the beautiful thing is a lot of times you'll be using the interest that you gained from it and the gains from it instead of utilizing the actual initial investment so what do i mean by that well if you're somebody who continues to build your portfolio and let's say you're getting an average rate of return of 12% and eventually you have 100,000 invested in there. Well, on an average year, then you'd be getting $12,000 in interest and you're not touching the principal. So as that principal continues to build, the amount of interest that will come your way will continue to build and you have more money to take out when it comes to the interest and you can sell it off and utilize it at any time. And that's the beauty of the actual stock market. You don't have to wait until an X amount of age, okay, when it comes to a non-retirement account. You can continue to withdraw, you can continue to you know, fund it, you can continue to buy and sell on a daily basis. And if you have over $25,000 invested in the market, most platforms will allow you to day trade. So once you get to that, that level, they'll allow you to have as many trades as you would like and there's no real limit. Up to that, usually it's like three to four per week, no more than five, that's for sure. But it's okay, you know, you're doing this incrementally. Think about it again, it's the long term because you're trying to bridge the gap to retirement so that you can stop working. There's no greater asset than time. And money compounds thanks to time. But what's even better than money compounding based on time is having freedom to do what you want while you want, to allow your dreams to come true, to live it out, to get after every single day. For some people, that's traveling. For others, that's spending you know just amazing amount of time with their kids, or their grandkids. For others, that's taking on new hobbies, you know, volunteering and giving back to the community. There's so many things that you can want to do, but you can't do it unless you have the ability to do so. And a lot of that has to do with how much money is in your bank account, how much you have funded, how much you have to float you to that specific age. So the key takeaways today is to get in the game early and often. If you're somebody who hasn't started out your retirement, regardless of what your age is, start out today. It's very easy. Simply go online, open up a an account you could call up TD Ameritrade, you call up Vanguard, you call up Merrill Lynch. Regardless of the platform, get involved today. Start funding it. Start getting into the habit of putting money away for your financial future. And also get involved when it comes to the market because that is a great um, net worth building tool. It's a great resource. Don't be scared of it. Understand that you can mitigate risk by diversifying your portfolio, by spreading it out amongst a lot of different sectors by utilizing mutual funds and ETFs, which are involved in you know, upwards of 25, 30 different companies, so that way you don't have to worry about the market tanking and you know, losing everything. Understand that this is your future. You have to take control of it and you have to do something differently. If you do that, if you take this advice, if you pick up a copy of my book, Winning With Money, Dollars and Cents, I assure you, you're gonna learn so much and you're gonna benefit not only yourself, 
but your family and those around you, you're gonna be feeling better, you're gonna be walking with more confidence, and you're gonna have truly that free and abundant life. Make sure you visit ef3life.com and also check out my social media at EF3Life. God bless and have a great day.